Hi. Okay, it's been a few days since I recorded. I was gonna give you an update. Things went amazing last week and it really showed me something that I am capable of weight loss, which is so exciting. I don't even know if I updated you about this yet, but I lost three pounds in one week. It was incredible. I felt so good, so, so great. And so it's just nice to know that it's possible for me to lose weight, right? But then the weekend came like they usually do. And I started to think things like, oh, I don't want to um, plan my food. I don't want to do salad. I just want to eat the pancakes that are in the fridge. You know, easy stuff. And so I gained the weight back, <laughs> which is my pattern obviously. And it is what was leading to me to believe that maybe this is how the meds work and you know, you can lose weight, but then it was gonna make you eat more <laughs> later to gain it back or whatever, which I think is probably crap, um, which is the thing I'm testing right now. And it's also why I am hiring Lydia to straighten my brain the heck out because I'm believing some things that I really, I don't think they're true and I'm on a mission to prove that, right? So I got on the scale this morning and I was, after all the stuff that happened over the weekend, which admittedly wasn't horrible stuff. I mean, I was eating a lot of pancakes, like the oatmeal banana pancakes, um, but also there was some stuff actually now that I remember hubby brought in Oreos and Chips Ahoy cookies into the house, which we don't have because I just don't want us to eat those. And because I had been kind of willy nilly earlier in the day, it opened up cravings and then I really wanted to eat those and I didn't do very well. But hubby was um, the jerk that I wanted him to be and he only gave me uh, like one handful of the Oreos and I was like, give me more, like um, the little mini ones. And I'd had some of the cookies and I was having some candy with the girls and um, but he was very nice and only gave me a few and then I was really happy that he did that afterwards. But then on Sunday, I felt horrible. I felt really bad physically. I was having really bad um, TMI gas and things like that. And then I also get this horrible sulfur burps. Like I burp all day and it's just sulfur and it's so gross and I hate it. And I was like, yep, that's what happens when I eat crap. But unfortunately, I didn't care. I was like, whatever, it is what it is. I made the decision because I didn't want to cook any food or make any food or whatever. And I don't feel like having a salad and what I realized. So then I started coaching with Lydia about this yesterday. <laughs> and here's where it gets funny because, not funny, but um, revealing and eye-opening. I actually did a bunch of work myself the, the morning before my call with her. Because I was trying to figure out like, how do I stop doing this? Like, what are the thoughts that are causing me to do this and I realized that one of the main thoughts was, um, one thing I struggle with is can you keep it up, like healthy eating, can you keep it up every day of your life? Like I have a belief in my head that you can't keep it up every day. Before I used to believe you could and now I, that one is gone so I'm trying to build that one again. So I was thinking about that and instead of doing a thought download like on paper and trying to work it out, I decided to have a conversation with myself out loud which is really good for me because I am a person who likes to talk to myself. <laughs> and it actually, I was in the car and it was actually helpful. I was pretending, it was like, it's like playing chess with yourself. I was pretending to like be my own coach. And so I was talking to myself and then I was like, what would I say if I heard a client say this, whatever. So I really, I learned a lot from that, which was cool. Cause now I can use that going forward too. Um, I learned a lot, but Lydia was able to help me open up so much more in there. What I realize a few things. First of all, that sentence, you can't like go, 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 go. You need rest. Like you need, like you need rest from planning and doing and chewing and things like that. But what I was kind of realizing was that what I'm saying is you sort of need a rest from <laughs> good nutrition. And she laughed at me. She was like, what do you mean? You need a break from good nutrition. And I'm like, yeah, that's weird, right? But it, it is what my brain thinks. So you should be able to have you know things in moderation the way people talk about moderation right but what i do know is that when i'm eating 100 percent nutritarian like this my cravings disappear right so like if husband brought in right now and he brought in oreos or something i'd be like whatever i don't want them because i've been eating well for the last day or two it's when i start to slip from 
just staying on track and doing what I do. It's not, that stuff is not hard too, by the way. That's not like a challenge to do that. You just do the same thing you did the day before, you know? Uh, but when I decide to myself, oh, that was really challenging, it's not. But if I go, oh, that was hard, then I start to go willy nilly about stuff and then husband brings in those things and then I can't stop eating them or whatever. But it's so beautiful how quickly I can get back to um, no cravings plus decisive, plus like, eh, I don't want that stuff, right? So I had weighed myself previously. I was 150. That's the weight I'm trying to get rid of. And last week I got down to 147, which I was like, what? That's amazing. And it felt like really solid weight. And it happened in like five days. I was like, wow, that's fast. I'm like, that's actually too fast. That's actually more fast than I want to lose. But then I was like, I wasn't hungry. So I guess it's actually good. And then I'm remembering, oh yes, this is what happens when you're a full nutritarian. You lose weight like crazy and you're not hungry. So, which is why I'm downstairs because I need to make my smoothie here, but I'll explain that in a minute. So I <clears throat> weighed this morning after things have kind of calmed down in my body a little bit. I feel much better. I had a perfect day of eating yesterday and it felt really good and now I don't have cravings anymore. And um, I weighed myself this morning and it was 150, but it didn't feel like a real 150. Like I can tell in my body now, you know, um, it's probably still a little bit of salt weight or something like that. Like I, I bet you tomorrow morning I'll see a different weight, something like 149 or 148. So the goal for myself, not what anyone else says, the goal for me is one pound a week for 25 weeks. That's what I'm on right now. And at last week I was like, oh, I'm already three pounds down. This is amazing. Of course I'm back up to 150. So um, I, I realized myself like, uh, one of the things that came up in our coaching yesterday was being a little bit more gentle on myself. Like the stuff that I'm working on is gonna take some some time to reprogram and I will explain what that is in just a second. But that means there's gonna be some failure and it's not gonna be automatic and you know. But what I did think was cool, I was three pounds down, which is way ahead of schedule. And if I just were to lose back down to 158, I would be right on schedule this week. And then what do we do about the weekend, okay? So I gotta say, coming back to one pound a week for 25 weeks feels so doable and it totally reduces my stress because I'm like, I always think like two pounds a week is kind of intense, like a little bit intense. And I'm, I always, when I tell myself I have to do two pounds a week, that's when I end up kind of going off track. But one pound a week feels awesome and it feels like really manageable, not a ton of hunger. So if you're not using nutritarian diet to lose weight in that way, it's a very manageable way of just sort of reducing portion size and you know, eating when you're hungry, stopping when you're full, stuff like that. <clears throat> which by the way is something that we talk all about in my vitality program about how to know when you're hungry and how to know when you're full even if you feel like your metabolism is all messed up or whatever we can all fix that stuff i could teach you how anyway the 25 pounds in 25 weeks sounds super manageable i actually want to lose from 150 i actually want to lose 40 pounds so that's 40 weeks and today i was thinking about like well if it takes 52 weeks like a full year that's cool i'll be happy with that you know that's less than a pound a week but I'm cool with that. So um, I also, side note, had my cholesterol rechecked today. I went off my statin a week ago on purpose, like without the doctor's recommendation because I am sick of it and I don't wanna be on it anymore. So we'll see how my cholesterol is. I think it's fine now. And even if it's not perfect, I know it will just continue to get better because of the way I'm eating. So side note, I'll update about my cholesterol really soon. If you recall, or maybe you don't recall, but I guess it was it was six months ago now because I've been on the statin for six months. I got my cholesterol checked and it was like, <laughs> not good. It was not good. Um, I mean, it was scary bad and I was like, whoa, okay, I guess I'm not really doing moderation, <laughs> right? And the, Dr. Furman always says that, like moderation kills because you, Everyone's version of moderation is relative and mine certainly was and I was not eating that well and I'm like I gotta get back on track like I gotta get nutritarian again Not that I have to just do the actions, but I have to actually want to be fully nutritarian So that's the work I've been doing right anyway So now that I'm there and my cholesterol I feel is probably resolved at this point like my triglycerides you guys were 460 something I think it was like you're about to have a stroke level kind of thing and um, now I'm in Last time I got checked three months ago, my cholesterol was back to normal, but my triglycerides were still a, like a little bit elevated, kind of elevated. And so um, she told me to stay on the statin for three more months. I didn't like it, so I, but I did it and I only, um, and then I quit last week. So we'll see where we're at. 
I think I'm probably doing really well. Um, I'll update you on that. And so the big thing that came up on Coaching with Lydia was I realized, I kind of uncovered, and it, this is gonna sound obvious when you hear me say this, but like, this is the work that we do on ourselves. This is the stuff that we can't notice and feel when we're in the moment. Like, why are we behaving in the way we're behaving? So, it's gonna sound obvious to you when I say this, but like, if you don't, in your own head, it's harder to work out. It's so much easier when there's a coach seeing it and helping you pick it out. And so, what we came up with was that my, and here's the thing that I have been trying to overcome this sentence of you can't do something every single day forever, right? And a friend of mine, Paige, coached me one time on that. She's like, well, you do that with your kids. Like you decide to feed them all the time, right? You decide to take care of them. That's a commitment you make. I'm like, yeah, but sometimes, and I think what was coming up in my head was like, sometimes I slack off and I don't do very well. Like I just feed them cereal all day and I'm just like, ugh, whatever. And this came up on Sunday where I was doing an art project with the girls. And then of course I had to do the rest of it because <laughs> they got bored. But it, we were making our own Valentine's for Valentine's Day and I wanted to get it finished. And I totally disregarded my own hunger and their hunger and like the world. And I just finished these Valentine's, which by the way, they're super cute. And I'm really proud of myself. Let me just show you real quick. They're so cute. Happy Valentine's Day. It was a really cute project, but um, whoa, that's close up. Let me get it back to where it's supposed to be. Um, but I totally disregarded the entire world while I was doing it. And then once I got finished, the kids were like, we need dinner. And I'm like, oh, right. And so I instantly had guilt and I was like, this is not the kind of mom I wanna be. I wanna like actually make their meals for them and have everything. Like we usually do that during the weeks, but then on the weekends, I have this idea in my head that you cannot, you can't keep it up all the time, right? You, you gotta rest sometimes. But then as I was thinking about it, I was like, but what I did this weekend is not the kind of mom I wanna be. I wanna be the kind of mom who actually like puts my kids nutrition first and puts my nutrition first. And I was like, right, okay, but how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna have to think to myself that the art project is less important than the meals and that the meals are always number one, no matter what's going on. Another thing that had happened was, I, I forget what it was we did on Saturday, but we, we were out and about and I just, that's how the willy nilly thing started because I just was kind of like, ah, oh, blah, 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 whatever. Um, and then so the weekend kind of went just a little bit crazy. So then when I was coaching with Lydia, we uncovered that the reason I have such a tr so much trouble with this thought, because I've been struggling with this for at least four years now since I got certified as a coach, because I remember, no, five years, because I, I remember getting coached on this. I've been struggling with this thought and what I uncovered, actually, this is really huge now that I'm sort of saying this out loud. And Lydia noticed this too. I didn't even really notice how big this was when I noticed it. But yesterday as we're coaching, I go, oh, I realized that the reason I, because Lydia was asking me questions like, well, why do you think you did that? Why do you think that came up? Whatever. And I realized from her questioning that the reason that I don't value structure, like meal structure and always kind of do the same thing, tradition, whatever. The reason I don't value it is because I wasn't raised that way, right? Nothing against my parents, it's just that they had different priorities. And so meals were never a priority for us after age like 10. Because we used to have family meals when I was a kid and I loved that, but uh, my parents got busy, my mom started working and she didn't have the ability to do what she did before. You know, it's that try to do everything thing and, and it's a losing battle. And you know, just nutrition and exercise were never really that important to my parents. It just it just wasn't. And so I realized that the reason I don't value routine and doing something every day is because I never had that example. And I was just wasn't raised that way, right? So I was like, my whole brain exploded and I was like, oh my God, now I know why. I know why deep down inside, I truly believe that you can't possibly do something every day. It's like not possible, right? But I like, I brush my teeth every day. You know, I, I don't pee in my pants every day, right? Like I actually, there are some things that I do every single day. I do eat every day. I don't like forget about eating or whatever. I mean, you can't really technically, but um, there are things that I do every day, like hugging my kids, loving my kids, being present with them. Like that stuff is really important to me. So I realize that the reason I'm not uh, valuing routine and schedules and things like this on the weekends is because I just don't value it in general. And then, so as we're talking about it, because Lydia had a very different experience raising her children and they're grown now. She was married to a Frenchman and so they did a French upbringing in a way. Like she li they lived in Australia, I think, but they had a French upbringing. So like she was, you know, he was French. So 
she learned the whole culture with her in-laws, seeing that they lived with them for a while, that kind of thing. So she could really see how that culture worked and they adopted that. The way that they did it, which is that meals are kind of sacred. Meals are tradition. Meals are just, they're just what you do. You do meals. You don't snack. Like not that, um, not that there's anything wrong per se, but like it's just culturally not what they do. You just don't snack. And she's like, I've never seen anyone standing at a table eating, like at a counter eating ever. That's just not, they just don't do it. Not that it's wrong, right? But, and, and I wanna say too, not that it's not possible to be successful when you do that, because I have proven you could be successful standing up eating and stuff like that, but just like putting more focus on the meal, like it being important. And Lydia talks so much about the way that that has affected her, the, her relationship with her girls and the, the way that her girls relate with food as well, like relate to food and, and that they, they're not like overeaters and stuff like that, that they just kind of have grown to, like there's family meals, we do them at these times, this is what we eat, blah, blah, blah. So for the last few coaching sessions, I've been just like picking her brain about what is it like to care about routine? <laughs> like, how could you care about routine? How could it matter, you know? Um, and why does it matter for families? And why does it matter for me? I, I mean, I want that, but I can't, I don't believe it yet, right? So each of these coaching sessions have been so eye-opening for me, which is exactly what it's like to get coached by us because we're uncovering thought patterns that have happened and been going on for many years. And, and it's these thought patterns that create our actions. It's these thought patterns that determine our long-term behavior, right? And what's beautiful is when we can uncover those thought patterns and see why we're doing what we're doing, that's when it truly changes. And a lot of people talk about habit building and how habit building is important. And yeah, it is. But like the reason that we don't stick to habits forever is because of our thought patterns and our beliefs and that deep seated stuff, right? So it's been so transformative for me. I hope this has been useful. I hope this was helpful for you. And I wanted to explain that so you can see what it's like to actually get coached, how it can just transform everything for you. And it can actually shift patterns that you've had for decades. And this is why I'm no longer a binge eater. This is why, like, I certainly have some overeating at times, right? But this is why I don't binge eat anymore. I used to believe that binge eating and food addiction was a thing. I used to believe that, like, that was my fate. And maybe the way you believe in addiction. I used to believe that way. And this is coming from experience because we have a lot of addiction in my family. Like, my brother was a drug addict, as y'all know. We've had some deaths in the family related to alcohol and lots of different addiction patterns. So I thought I was just an addict, right? But I've proven to myself that I'm not. Um, yes, sugar is addictive. Yes, these things are addictive, but our brains are so much more powerful than that addiction stuff, okay? So perhaps maybe you could start to wonder about this and be like, hmm, I wonder if that's true. You can also decide to not listen to what I'm saying and not believe me and that's okay. But I find that empowerment, feels better than disempowerment. Okay, so anyways, uh, if you want to coach with us or talk about how this works and how it might work for you to change some patterns for you over the years when it comes to food, weight, exercise, whatever, get on a strategy call with us, right? Look for, um, I'll put a link below this video to um, get on a strategy call because we're amazing and we know you're amazing too and we wanna show you that.